My name is Fatima and welcome to Fatima's Journey. Today we're talking about resumes. This is the first of many videos I have planned around resumes. Sorry for skipping the last couple of weeks. Recruitment season is in full swing. If you're looking for a fellowship or something like that, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, I work for a healthcare organization, so it's healthcare administrative fellowship recruitment season. So Without further ado, I thought this would be a great time to talk about, to start getting into resumes and how you can improve your resume, things you shouldn't be doing on your resume. So to start off that mini series within the bigger professional development stuff, I thought a video on five biggest mistakes that people make with their resumes would be a great starter. So the first th mistake that people tend to make is not putting their name front and center on their resume. I have looked at countless resumes where it was hard to figure out who is applying for this position? Who is the, whose resume is this? Where's your name? It should be at the top of the paper. It should be big. It should be the biggest font you have, font size on your paper, and it should be bold, front, center, bold. If it's not, I'm having a difficult time finding out who you are, which makes it difficult to match a name to the, um, to your experience and all of that. And it makes me do more work than I already have to do going through hundreds of resumes. So do not, recommend doing that. Second biggest mistake that I've been seeing is that your resume is more than two pages. Clearly, if you have count, like many years of experience, your resume will likely be more than two pages. However, if you're going straight from undergrad to applying for a job or from undergrad to grad school, your resume should not be more than two pages. You need to scrunch, scrunch, get it down to one page, okay? Put, decide on what experience is most relevant to that job posting that you're applying for and only list those experiences. Include a leadership experience, of course, any professional affiliations, but you want to get it down to one page. You shouldn't, if you're applying for a job in a certain sector and you have maybe two internships that apply to that, but for some reason you also want to include the job you held at Apple to make ends meet, don't. Take Apple off of there. Keep the two experiences that are relevant, okay? One page, please. Third mistake, having irrelevant work experience on your resume. So that goes back to my other point about your resume being two pages long. A lot of people's resumes are more than one page because they have irrelevant work experience on there. Look at the job posting. What are they looking for? What are the skills that they're looking for? Um, what type of experience do they want you to have, etc. Looking at that, look at what experience you do have, put those experiences on your resume. The more you put on there, the less the person is likely to read and the less they're likely to go through each and every experience. If you choose two or three experiences that really apply to the job you're applying for, and you highlight those on your resume by only including those experiences, they're more, the recruiter is more likely to read through each and every one of those experiences and see that you are the perfect person for them to move on to the interview round. So yeah, take off those irrelevant work experiences. The fourth biggest mistake that I've been seeing on resumes is that your bullet points aren't complete. You're saying, I led this project, led this project, was on this committee, and then your the bullet points underneath that one experience is like 10, 15 bullet points, but I have no idea what you actually did. The best way to go about bullet points is to use the, what is it? I'm gonna insert the name of the exact method to use. And it essentially has you starting with an action word, saying, starting with an action word like um, led, executed, spearheaded, something like that going into the tasks that you actually did and ending off with the results that happen as a result as a result of your task or your action. So that is like really the resume bullet format. I'll do a separate video going more in depth on this with examples and really walking you through the whole process, but that is how your resume bullet point should look. If you want to get ahead or you need that information right now, I suggest you check out my Etsy shop. I actually am selling resume templates and with each resume template comes a free PDF that goes through step-by-step step how to set up your resume bullet points for optimal success. So you're not just listing 10, 15, led this, did this, did this, but nobody's really, but the recruiter isn't really getting a good idea of the results of that or the real actions that you took besides leading it. What did leading it entail? How many people were on the team, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely check out my Etsy shop if you're interested in getting a head start on that or you need that information right now. Um, so yeah. 
Do not, do not have 10, 15 million bullet points underneath one experience that don't actually tell any substantive information about what you did in that position. Five, the fifth biggest mistake that I've been seeing is that your resume isn't organized clearly. Your resume should have clear sections where you were educated, education at the top or at the bottom. People have preferences on where they decide to put it, but it should be clear where are you receiving your education from? Where did you graduate from? What certifications do you have at the top or all at the bottom? Don't be mixing it up throughout the resume. On top of that, have your ex work experience or professional experience separated from your leadership experience. This is particularly the case for if you um, are applying straight out of undergrad or graduate school and you held leadership positions on a club or in a club or a student organization or, or a committee or something like that, those are things that you would consider leadership experience and not necessarily professional experience. But obviously, if you've been full-time in the workforce for a while, you being a senior consultant coincides with a professional experience and a leadership experience, so you would just put that as a professional experience. So that's been something I've been seeing is just it's really hard to decipher. People are putting in their club experience right in there with their internships and like work experience. So the dates overlap and when you're looking at it, it's not easy to decipher, okay, was this an organization or was this something where they actually did like an internship or worked full time or something like that? So you wanna make sure your resume has clear sections to make it easy to follow and easy for the person to read. The easier it is for the recruiter to read your resume, one, the more likely they are to actually read the whole thing and the more likely they are to read it, the better they are to understand you as a candidate and hopefully move you on to the interview round. So those are the five biggest mistakes that I've been seeing this recruitment season. So I look forward to continuing this series by talking more about that bullet point equation that I mentioned earlier, as well as the STAR method when you're doing phone interviews, how to ace phone interviews. I already have a video up about phone interviews and some tips that I, and the four main tips that I would give you. So if you haven't already checked out that video, be sure to click the link in the description or the um, note on this, the tag coming across out on this video and go and check that out as well. If you've already moved past the resume seat part of the application, seat, application um, timeline, make sure you're doing well on your phone interviews and so on. So the last thing that I want to plug before letting y'all go is if you're looking for a resume template, you see that these are some five big mistakes and you see them on your own resume, and you're like, okay, I wanna correct this, but I'm not really sure, and you don't have time to wait for me to continue the series next week, definitely check out my Etsy shop. I'm selling resume templates. Right now, I have two up there. There's the standard simple template, which works really great for traditional industries where they might use resume readers that where the computer just pulls off the information um, and puts it into a database, so it's um, easier for the recruiter to go through. Uh, and so those are ones that are easy for the computer to read. Um, so that's the simple, classic resume template. So if you wanna check out that one, it already has all of the sections for you. You just have to plug and drop your information in and each resume template actually comes with a bullet point equation that I was telling you about with some really great action words that will help your resume to further stand out. The second resume template is more of the trendy kind that has become more popular um, in terms of having some designs on it and things like that. But yeah, definitely check out the Etsy shop. You can preview those, see how you edit them and all of those great things. If you wanna work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis so I can guide you through your application process, feel free to email me at askfatima2 at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from y'all and I can't wait to continue this series next week. I'll be here next week. Will you be here next week? If not, then I hope you have a good life. Bye. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, thumbs up the video, and be sure to comment. What type of resume tips do you want to hear about or what type of resume questions do you have? Can't wait to talk to y'all more about resumes next week.